Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel. In this video today, guys, we're going to be going through Trilemma 2. So, first of all, before we dive into this video, if you haven't seen the Selling Triangle video, that will be linked in the description down below. If you want any kind of reference or context for some of the stuff we're going to talk about, that's the video to check out. There's also another video called Trilemma 1. This is Trilemma 2 we're on today, so we're going to be chatting through some marketplace movement and how you can be, should be, will be, maybe, uh, maneuvering yourself. I hope you enjoy this one, guys. Like, subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff, and let's get stuck into it. Now the first little part of this opportunity is opening up to is, is the price of EFOR over the last month has been running away and running away and running away. So if you were previously on the mar on the market picking up EFOR prior to this, the, the coin you've picked up has got a lot more weight and a lot more muscle. Equally, if you're able to sell cards that are currently in form and they're at a good EF, you know, kind of rate comparison to what they've been over the last two months, then um you you, you know if you're able to acquire um Ethereum for the price it's at now in the same kind of quantity as you were before or if you've got some left over from previously then it's going to swing a little bit of this towards you in your favour almost like a handicap for the better you know and the second part of is we've got this kind of odd kind of shift in demand you know with the recent expansion pack that was announced and some of the other stuff like the progress bar and the academy league and all this other stuff we've got coming down the pipeline to us as well a lot of you know users prior to i don't know april would do myself included with a builder gallery in mind trying to be quite a uh, season sensitive you know so even when euro shuts down you were still going to be um, viable in like whatever levels that you operate in D4, D3, D2, whatever um, whereas now that's not quite as important, I think people are thinking it's now le much less important than it actually still is if that makes sense, but because of that you will feel, uh, you will find in the marketplace at the moment there's a lot of people <coughs> trying to just shed excess cards that they have and some of those cards will be much better than the ones you have at the moment, some of them will be cards that you've actually been long admiring and waiting for them to come into a price range where you can actually grab them and sure like the fiat amounts are, aren't really terribly that different if anything they're still on the up but if you've been sitting on EFR or you're able to trade cards and get EFR at good rates like I say you're able to pick up these what I call elevator cards you know guys that will take your your lineup from being 40th to 20th you know guys that really do make the step up in class and um, on the pitch more importantly m most important above all um there's no actually really good examples on this page. A lot of the best cards I picked up in my club I bought between December and February this year, you know, when Ether was doing this last kind of rocket and runaway, and I had good cards I could sell into the market and liquidate and then go buy cards that I previously couldn't have afforded, or subsequently as well, I also had an ETH balance from prior to this kind of rocket going off. So when you can get those types of cards into your gallery, guys, it really do step up in class on the pitch. It strengthens your position as a club from top to bottom, you know, and it really makes you much more uh, competitive, much more um, involved, and you know just much better to compete and it's much more obviously fun when you're winning you know um so the cards i would be always been looking to buy in this kind of trilemma where you've got a kind of the, the change in demand hasn't really coincided with the ether thing it's kind of separate to that because we've had in-game developments so i say that just kind of rather than um what's been happening recently is a lot of the demand has been focused into territories you know like america and japan korea etc europe at specific hot points Whereas now it feels like those hot points have went down a few degrees, if that makes sense. So we're going to get Euros in the summer, we're going to get Copa America, we're going to get Euro under 20 ones. We're going to get lots and lots of competitions to fill out. They're going to get their own division, it's going to be called the Global League or something like that. And it's for all the international games. So that will be amazing to be competing in. But it takes a bit of the pressure off how many MLS cards do you have, how many J-League cards do you have, you know. So um, I think that should give you a wee, uh, a wee opportunity to take some poise. And really just think right who have i been actually gunning down forever and i can finally maybe now try and catch them at an eth price that suits me you know like i picked up rookie cherokee for a quarter of a coin um i can't even remember when it was but it was um we'll be able to pull it up easy enough and it was from a friend of the channel as well i forget exactly who at this point um our city and i picked him up for i think it was like yeah it was a quarter of a coin and what was the date on it the second of january or the first of february uh 2nd of January, right? So Ether was just touching up to £700 or something like that. So, again, the assets have become most liquid. When Ether is going up and people want to sell to liquidate for any possible reason, 
the most liquid assets are your best ones. You know, the crap guys are always crap guys. You know, the good guys still always sell. There's always a market for them um, because they can get you on the leaderboard. So um, I, I've been at the kind of receiving end of that as well. I've sold my Yemen in that period as well to go and fund some of these elevator cards. Um, my Dorsh, my Lucime, um, Bailey, Amiri. You know, there's a few guys that I kind of let go at those points. And it's, for some of them, it was timed absolutely perfectly, you know, which was fortuitous, if nothing else. But these elevator cards are definitely the ones you should be looking for in this sort of trilemma situation because the market will ebb and flow. You know, I actually just went to look at the market data on so rare it's uh, some so rare data um so the one thing I, when i'm thinking about this type of stuff in terms of like the big cards in the game the sd50 index is a, a quite a good barometer it's not totally perfect because of the because of the protected card status which i accept but something like bruno fernandez just totally skews that because the circulation is so limited but he has a, a premium premium card of course but as you can see like the market will go up and it will go down and we're on a downward slide the now and this is mainly down to the Ethereum rise, as well as the user base that spiked with this price spike, some of their appetites have been mildly satisfied, you know, so you're not, when you've got 50 cards, you're not as hungry to go and get 50, you know, <laughs> once you've got your 50, you're then thinking about the next 5, the next 8, the next 10, whatever it might be, um, and then when people's appetites slow down, the market does become much more considered and much fairer and representative of, you know, values and all the rest of it as well. So these chances come and they go, is my point. You know, when it will come and when it will go exactly. You know, you'd have to be a fortune teller to really know when these things start and end. But I definitely know an opportunity when I see one and it's one of these things. I just bought Van Dyke myself. I got that for half a coin. Um, and at the moment, you know, Ether's trading at about 2800 So that's not too far off the price I would have probably had to pay for him in fiat terms back when he IPO'd. But the problem is, is back then that he was about a coin, maybe it's one2 and that was always just a little bit much for me. Now I'm picking them up and it's May rather than January. I'm not locking that money up for quite as long as I would have done. And he's further down the road to recovery. There's not been any hiccups or, or setbacks or anything like that. And by all accounts, I follow him on social media. Um, he's coming back. Konati looks to be signing for Liverpool as well, which will be great. And um, yeah, so a card like that is really going to help me jump up from where my gallery currently is next season. And, you know, for 2022, certainly, it's going to be a big part of my gallery success what has been a big part of the success my club has had over the last couple of months has been the super rares i was able to get myself into in that time period because i was quite i was quite comfortable in d4 and i was scraping along and quite you know getting through d3 every uh, podiums once or twice already and i really just wanted to push everything up a level and at that stage it was getting super rares now with everything that's coming into play with the academy league and you know maybe the, re the rookie league is going to get revisited also there will be people who have maybe bought two super rares that are now thinking maybe i don't need two super rares right now now i would say on this note it is always good to keep a hand on a super rare or two if you are going to be moving to d3 at some point if you want to maybe take a you know slow your roll and maybe experience the progress bar and all that kind of stuff then having those super rares locked and loaded and ready to go for when you're done with that and you feel pro you know it can give you a jump start to really solidifying and then moving up a level with the new system that's coming but point being, there will be people that will try to sell super rares now that number one, want to liquidate the ETH for whatever reason, or number two, they maybe bought them and they maybe don't quite need that many super rares anymore. Um, and if you are maybe scrapping along in D3 with okay super rares and you're looking to get something slightly better, maybe you're looking to make that jump into D2, whatever it might be, um, there will be an opportunity for some super rares coming around as well, whether it even just be on the auctions, if it is ETH that you're, you're picking up to, to dive into the, um, the marketplace with, because the competition will be a little bit less fierce on some of these mid-range super rares, you know, guys like Trippier, for example, you know, or I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head, but you get the point, I think, you know, so there's a great opportunity to get some of these level up cards that will help move you up the levels um, over the next 12 months, next 18 months, you know, that's the t sort of time scales you need to think about in football, because transfers, tactics, managers, all these things are, you know, forces that are that do make a difference in the market you know if you're playing for if you're Trippier playing for Simeone it's much better than Trippier playing for Pochettino you know you're going to get different things out of those players uh, you know those two different situations if that makes sense and those sort of um forces if you like are in place for typically you know 6 12 18 month kind of periods is when they typically will change and move around and transfer windows in and off seasons um so yeah uh, so trilemma two guys ETH is on the up 
demand is kind of a bit more widely dispersed. I would I would probably say it's not quite as laser focused in the regions as it once was, and we're all a little bit recoiling and waiting for the progress bar to come out. You know, so everyone is trying to get their stall set out. And this is a great opportunity for you to be getting those level up cards. You know, not the 12th defender that you don't need or, you know, <laughs> anything like that. But that striker that will score you 10 to 15 goals a season, you know, or that goalkeeper that will play. Um, these types of purchases can definitely be, they're, they're a wee bit closer to being attained, you know. So, um, what's your thoughts and opinions, guys, on the marketplace where we're at? What moves have you been making? Have you been selling anything at good rates? Been picking any, any bargains up? Um, like, subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble. I look forward to reading the comments on this one. About to pop on the screen, there's some more stuff I've made you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.